Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got a cast up for you, and it is actually a normal cast. Hopefully I can get back on my regular schedule and do all of the awesome stuff that I promised at the beginning of the year, but then kind of fell through because life happens, and sometimes you can't prevent that. So, I'm not going to babble on about any useless nonsense. I'm going to dive straight into this game, and hopefully it will be an action-packed one that we can thoroughly enjoy. On the northern side... We have Double D taking UEF, Corwin as Cybran, and we've got Executioner taking Seraphim, and last but certainly not least, Chevalier taking Aeon. That is actually someone I have not seen in a while. We've got some high-ranking players in this one, so hopefully this will be a good, solid match and something that we can learn stuff from. On the southern side, we've got Box taking UEF, Emberg as Seraphim, Buildmore takes as Aeon and last is HZH taking another Seraphim. So no um, no Cybern on the southern side. That is kind of odd on Canis. Usually there will be a Cybern and all four factions represented in the north. Now we can already see there's a bunch of land scouts headed out here. White's got two. Corwin has two. That is Chevalier. I've got to remember that. And then on the southern side, we've got a little bit of a later scout out, but there are mech marines and flares out, labs taking to the corners of the map. I am sure, 100% positive, that those are going for engineer denials. There will almost always be an engineer right here. If you can sneak that lab up into that corner, you can nail that one. And then there will be an engineer over here building the expansion. Now there is a cell in over here and over here. So between the two of them, they should be able to scout that out and prevent any major damage from occurring. We've already got Mantis coming out for Corwin. Corwin is definitely getting on the ball with his Tech 1 land production. And the other players do appear to be doing the same. We've got several tanks out for Emberg. He is building engineers. On Canis, you got to remember to do your manual reclaim or reclaim, whatever. I always love it when people pause right at the beginning of the game because then I can take my engineers and I can do all of the manual reclaim that my little heart desires and get that extra mass boost. It's just kind of an awesome thing that happens. I don't ever do it to people because I hate to pause games and make others wait on me, but it, it, it is definitely nice when other people do it. All right, ACUs, let's see, one and a two, and there's the other. Uh, going into the expansion, that is kind of an odd choice. Usually they will be fronted out here, and one in the base. Corwin not putting his ACU forward. We have a potential attack com over here and over here. And then on the southern side, all of the ACUs have moved out. We have red on the front guard on the right-hand side. Nice little push up here. This, this Tham is having a lot of luck. Oh no, wait. Whoops, I got my colors confused. My bad, guys. That was a prevented run by. But we do have a legit run by down here. This striker has bypassed that striker and is probably going to kill this engineer before being nabbed by that ACU if the ACU stops building long enough to kill it. So we have uh, Southern ACUs, we have yellow, purple, gray, and red. So all ACUs accounted for. I find it extremely odd that there is not a major air presence because normally on this map, you'll have a ton of early bombers and it's kind of disappointing not to see them. I usually like watching them run around and rack up some kills on engineers. Every once in a while, you'll get an epic one, but apparently not this game. They have decided that land is far more important than air. I am going to assume that Emberg is going to rush TAC Missile Commander because he always does. That is a 7 mass cost upgrade, and I am not sure... I guess it's Tech 2. That is Tech 2. That will allow him to throw down a Tech 2 generator and get easy access to the TAC launcher if he so desires. He can probably have the TAC launcher by about 8 minutes at this point, I would think. Although he may be foregoing it since it is a little bit later in the game. I don't think he has enough power on hand to actually build the TAC launcher. Ah yes, Tech 2 generator. That is exactly what he's after. 
Looks like Double D is pushing forward ever so slightly. He did get his production up right over here. That is three land factories online. And he's bringing some units to the front. Box is going to have a bit of an advantage, though, because he is throwing down four land factories to produce units. He will have more build power on the case. And therefore will eventually overwhelm uh, Double D Especially considering that I think yellow will have more mass extractors. We've got three, four on the expansion, and then one, two, yes. So yellow box will have the advantage both in mass and build power. He's drawing his tanks back in. The ACU is going to help clean up the tanks. It's not exactly the best situation you could ask for. You typically do not want to engage the ACU directly with tanks. You want to engage other tanks with your tanks while your ACU engages the tanks. And that way you can reduce the damage potential of the entire mass of units. And the best thing that you can hope from for the enemy commander is that he fires at your ACU the whole time because then your tanks stay alive. The ACU is an incredibly strong force on the battlefield in the Tech 1 stage, especially when accompanied by a group of tanks. And your targeting priorities can make a big difference in how the overall fight will progress. Let's see, Ember does have his Tech 2 generator on, and that looks an awful lot like a TAC missile backpack to me, but I have not as of yet seen a missile launched and we do have a tech 2 factory right here and tactical defense is going down right next to that uh tech 2 mass extractor so that one will be safe hopefully he can get that tech 2 yes there is a tech 2 engineer moving to the back to build one there and around the other mass extractors so chevalier taking every precaution given that his opponent is seraphim and has a Tech 2 suite and has a Tech 2 generator. The logical conclusion would be that at some point you are going to see attack launcher. On the right hand side, Red is actually doing very well for himself and I am quite surprised at this. Box is getting hammered back out of his position. He may have gone for a couple too many mass extractor upgrades and this Corsair is probably going to cause his early death, but maybe not. That was a veterancy that just popped up, and as long as he micros around the Lobo shots, which he is doing a pretty good job of, and those interceptors can knock that Corsair off of him, he will actually be able to get out alive. Double D is going to stay back. He's not going to press too much and potentially lose that advantage, and he is going to get pushed a little bit by some Tech 1 bombers. I think he's trying to get this land factory down though so that he can claim the reclaim with any engineers he has. He's in a dangerous spot though because the northern team does not have any air power to project and we have two tech two gunships down here. So he either needs to get some flak online or he needs to get a lot of interceptors of his own. But I do see something here. White has sent him a mobile flak to the southern side so that will allow for a bit of air protection. Now on the northern side, you can see Emberg has settled in at last, and he is going to start bombarding the northern side with tack launches. Now, so far he's not done an awful lot of damage. He actually tried to come out of the water right here and got forced back in by point defense that I saw in the corner of my eye to my understanding that is what happened. And he is just going to casually keep launching away while these engineers struggle to get this tack defense up. I am afraid that one tack defense will not be enough. They will need a second one. And he's going to do a substantial amount of damage before that happens. He's actually redirecting at red. Ah, no, at white. And tack defense saved it. Aeon doing a very good job as long as the tack missile is in range. I spy a Corsair snipe. Very nice work from HCH. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but over here on the side, he was firing down from the cliff with his ACU, making excellent use of his gun range, and we have a tack launcher there. I'm not sure that it has fired, but it has been built. Corsair is coming down on HCH. That was a whole lot of health shed off of that ACU. I think he's dead. He is down to 1,400 health. Interceptors struggling to protect the Corsairs, some brilliant dodging on his part, but he's got units to worry about as well. Those Corsairs are going to take him out, but we have Tech 1 bombers and a gunship on Executioner that is going to force his ACU back, hopefully, 
and maybe score a kill. They need to get an ACU out of the way in order to even up the odds. Over here on the left-hand side, we now have Tech 2 on the field. The OP Obsidians are pushing in on the left. Those are going to easily take out that mass extractor and do a pretty substantial amount of damage right there and then retreat into the safety of the rearward portion of the base. I would not say they're necessarily completely safe, but uh, they are withdrawing slightly. And Ember complaining about the noobs and laying down a sonar and kind of sort of calmly walking towards the base. Hopefully he does not rage quit. He has somewhat of a tendency to do that on occasions, but uh, we will not hold it against him. Purple, that is Ember. Emberg is moving some units forward, but he is largely tech one. There are a few Ilshabas in the mix, but not a great amount. And over here on the left-hand side, Double D is entirely tech one. Looks like Box is rolling out a couple of tech two units, but for the most part, his units on the field are tech one as well. Got some scouting going on down here. On the right-hand side, we do have some Ilshabas in the mix and a very strong firebase over here. Nice little forward position just to tie up loose ends and make sure that nothing comes in uh, this away. And Chevalier is really not building any units at the moment. He is probably in a hardcore eco mode. They do have an advantage on the northern side since the pressure was taken completely off of the right and actually Executioner is doing a good job of harassing down here taking out everything he can that belongs to build more tanks while he has the ability. Emberg throwing down a point defense, saying he doesn't care that he's getting Corsair sniped and not really having a very good attitude about the game. And let's see, I was going to check in with Chevalier. Yes, he is building away. He's got one Tech 3 mass extractor down and is building another. And the only person with more eco than him at the moment is build more tanks. The difference here being that Build More Tanks has substantially more mass extractors, and that is going to allow him to get upgrades more easily. Additionally, he did get the reclaim here, and he now has four more handy dandy Tech 1 mass extractors, about to be five. So, this right hand side here, that is going to be the eco powerhouse of the southern team especially considering that he does have Tech 3 air online now. It looks like he has a single resource allocation. I don't think he has double. It is 4.6k if I'm not mistaken. Double gives you slightly more than that. Emberg handily wiping out the mass extractors on the left side. We've got three down and he can probably no, can't kill the fourth. That has to fly over that zapper. That is one thing. A lot of people complain about the Seraphim tactical missile being overpowered. And I, I agree to a certain extent. It is a very powerful weapon, and it is significantly more powerful than the UEF. But, at the same time, if you are very careful about where you build your tack defense, you can defend from the Seraphim uh, tack launcher pretty much as easily as you can from the UEF. And this is a beautiful pair of tack missiles here, wiping out uh, two capped. Where did the other one go? I thought two were launched. Maybe I was mistaken, or maybe there was a target here that I missed. I'm not sure. Um, you have to build the tack defense forward, though. You can't build the tack defense right next to the mass extractor, because as the Seraphim tack comes down, if this gets off multiple shots, it will take the tack missile down. That is the optimal position for guarding a mass extractor if you know the location of the commander that's launching. It is a little bit harder for any faction, but Aeon though, because um, if you don't know the direction it's coming from, you can't build extremely far forward, and sometimes tax will slip through the cracks. Aeo was a poet, and I did not even know it. Guts. I thought that was a strat bomber for a second there, but it was not. It is simply a tech one bomber that is hanging out in the big boys club with the ASF. Nice little uh, push on the left over here. 
Uh, that is, let's see, that is execute, no, double D, my bad. Apparently I'm going colorblind. Um, double D only has the tech one units on the front other than a couple of mobile shields. I don't actually see any tech two tanks unless they've already been killed. And this is going to be a beautiful combined push from Emberg and Box. They're going to take over the entirety of this side, pushing out all the units, probably going to kill the build power. I would take the time to focus fire a couple of artillery over there and make sure that that is eradicated and they're going to be free to push around in a loop here and wipe everything out. And then on the right side, Emberg is, well, center, not the right side of the map. Emberg is being pushed back slightly. There was a Harbinger, uh, where did the wreck go? And a couple of Tech 2 units, but Emberg with a handy dandy overcharge and the help of a few units was able to defeat those despite the fact that he lost his forward point defense. So he will win out on that engagement. He will get the mass to reclaim. And on the bottom side here, we have a devastating push. Executioner was able to get a group of Zooies around to the southern side. And we can see he did have mobile flak with it. There's a Restorer coming out trying to zap those off. But Restorers obviously do not have a tremendous amount of ground damage, so it will take a little bit longer for them. If you're defending in your base here, honestly, I would build Tech 2 gunships. They, um, they cost less, they come out faster, and they have higher DPS per mass versus ground units by far than the restores. So I think that would have been the better option, but if Build More Tanks is looking to maintain air control, perhaps he had the longer game in mind. So that is going to be the end of that push, I do believe. I saw that coming down earlier, but I did not think about the fact that they were Zooies and therefore can cross the water into the base and wreak havoc. Up here in the north, we have a group of Harbingers cleaning up these Tech 1 and Tech 2 units quite handily. There was a single one there that did get sniped off, but the three together are easily going to be able to overwhelm all of these, but not before all of this eco was wiped out. All the build power, all of the mass extractors are gone, long gone, and that is going to help out the left side substantially, as well as damaging the total eco of the northern team. Taking a look across the map, we've got Chevy at 135 mass income, by far in the lead, and well, there was a tick right there, build more tanks, uh, that was reclaimed, 103 and then Box is sitting at a comfortable 120. So those are your top three Ecos, and Corwin pulling 128. I think this is actually a power stall. No, it is not, that was a reclaim. I was gonna say it's a power stall in progress because it was blipping quite far apart, but uh, it is not, it is strictly reclaim. Got a T3 Scout online, that does mean we have T3 Air for Corwin. Cybern T3 Air, not going to be able to really contest with the Aeon ASF in a direct combat situation, but that will give the Northern team stealthed Strat Bombers, which can be quite handy on any map because you can sneak in and the guys don't know where the Strat Bombers are coming from or headed to until it is far too late, even if you have Omni. Although on this map, Omni does cover a substantial portion of the map. When one appears, we will have to take a look at how far it actually extends. Got some Tech 2 gunships pushing with harassment, and they're going to kill a couple of mass extractors here and there, and then get sniped off by those ASF. And it looks like Corwin is pretty much dedicating his eco to ASF production. Um, Billboard Tanks does have a few ASF and a few restores, overall a more powerful Air Force than the North has, but you can see how much build power that Tanks has on his air, and then you can look at how much build power Corwin has on his air, and you can see that there's going to be a problem in just a few minutes. About three more minutes of air production and Corwin will be able to wipe the floor with build more tanks due to superior numbers, despite the fact that the Cyber and ASF are objectively inferior once you engage. And I know that somebody is going to argue with me in the comments about how the Cyber and ASF are actually amazing because of the stealth and you can surprise other people and you know what? I agree with you. 
but on a small map like this where there is probably going to be omni and if you cross the halfway point of the map you're pretty much guaranteed to be flying over the heads of enemy units who can spot you uh, your stealth on your asf is pretty much useless now it is very handy on the strat bombers but as far as the asf goes uh, you should be building a stronger asf because it, it's it's not going to be helpful double d Trying to transport some engineers somewhere. Probably trying to nab some reclaim, but having second thoughts. I'm not really sure that uh, transport's kind of being floaty, not really focusing too much. Got a Galactic Colossus that is in the work for Chevy. It will be built relatively quickly due to 188 income, or 177, depending on what reclaim ticket is. Build more tanks matching Chevy neck and neck for eco potential and not building a tech four that i can see there are no tech fours in the works for the southern team unless i am missing something quite terribly box is throwing down a quantum gateway that is going to give him access to the ridiculously powerful uef sacus and those are probably the only unit in the current game balance that I can objectively say is overpowered. UEF SACUs are stupidly strong against pretty much any land force and it, it is ridiculous. The amount of damage that you can get for the mass you put in and the amount of health that is in that shield. I'm not going to sit here and list off the specs and explain to you how to use them. You can figure that out for yourself but they are very strong I would definitely encourage you to get them because they mop the floor with T4s and T3 alike. Problem is getting them up. I will admit that the build time is very high. You have a pretty large dead zone where you don't have an incredibly huge amount of units online unless you are also spamming Percival's as Box is doing here. So, uh don't want to get caught up in an SACU rush because you'll probably lose so much map control in the process of that that you will lose despite the fact that you have a very strong unit online but you know they're handy when you're already established they are very good on the right hand side we have Othams and they are getting slaughtered by restorers but the restorers are going to in turn get slaughtered by interceptors when was the last time you saw that ASF swooping in to catch the last few, but for the most part, that was the work of the interceptors. And I'm hoping, yes, there you can see the lightning tank. That's actually a really cool unit. That is the T3 mobile anti air for the Seraphim, and that is, uh, it, it can also attack ground units. I'm trying to find it again. I think it died. It has a really cool animation on it. It literally strikes things with lightning, and it is so freaking cool just because of that. I really have no other reason. It's not a super strong gun. It's not anything that is overwhelmingly amazing, but I like the effect on it. You got engineers dropping over here on the right-hand side, going to drop right within range of a point defense that's friendly so it doesn't matter i'm bad at keeping track of colors whalers bearing down on these percivals i was very happy about the percival push to begin with but then strap bomber and whalers and tech two gunships and all other manner of air attacks coming in to clean up the area and percivals are going to be greatly reduced in number before they make land now, there's still enough of them They are able to knock out a mass extractor and do a little damage before having to push back the other direction. I'm going to go hide them in the water and wait till the gunships get uh, distracted by something else. The best thing that you can have is a d d d d d d d d in the enemy units. Now there's a Galactic Colossus. Build more tanks rushed one up in the time it took Chevy to finish his and walk southward. As long as this Galactic Colossus does not vet up the southern GC will win because target prioritization was bad. Chevy was not watching and he is actually focusing on killing off land factories and other things. I'm not sure if that was a direct fire choice. Mercy's coming in and the restorer, yeah, 
It's basically going to leave this Galactic Colossus full health. It has 80 some odd percent health. Strat Bomber coming in trying to knock a few percentage points off, but it is going to fail. And that is going to be the end of that. Southern team now has a GC worth of mass. That is the worst thing that you can do at this point in the game is hand the other team a mass donation of that caliber. And Whalers moving in on the southern side. This is something you do not see every day. Whalers traversing the entire map and going to get flayed by that Sam and the combined forces of the ASF. Tech 2 gunships coming in to join the party. They are going to bypass the Sam. And the ASF were very distracted and or being dead because of the swarm of out of fuel interceptors that is bearing down on this group. They still focus all of their damage forward. So if you fly in front of them, you do so at your own risk. But uh, yeah, they are going to be reasonably effective. I'm kind of impressed. And these gunships are knocking out a whole lot of eco. Nicely done from Executioner on this harassment as GC is moving around to the right and yes there's some more ASF online box is now making ASF as hard as he can and hoping to probably close the air gap between the north and the south on the northern side we've got two players producing air that actually have been for a while and that is gonna give uh, three three air players nice that is going to give them a distinct advantage and it's going to make things even more difficult for the southern team. When you do not have a competing ASF force, you are asking for strap bombs to the face. Got another transport, probably full of engineers, but nope, it is actually full of Percival's T3 units of some kind or another. Nice little drop from Executioner that is going to allow him to get some units to the front line much faster than they could walk the entire map. And he's getting brave. He has noticed that there's not really a whole lot of air support. He's going to drop the Percivals on the other side from the GC. And they're going to waste the entirety of their alpha damage on whatever that was. Tech 1 radar maybe? Something. It was something tiny. Definitely not worth wasting the potential of a Percival on. But uh, to each his own, perhaps he was just not fast enough on the target selection. One thing that is really cool, and I will mention here, uh, second GC up. Build more tanks is now in control of two Galactic Colossuses, and he is pretty much safe in his base. No worries there. And we have a second Galactic Colossus about to come online for Chevalier, too. Apparently this is going to be a Galactic Colossus slugging match. So, GCSM, yeah. Um, if you have a transport and you want to load units into it and you want to immediately attack something on the drop location, what you do is you select the units that you want to load, you hold down shift, you load them into the transport and then attack the unit that you want to kill. What will happen is the, the orders will be executed in the move that they, in the Blah. The orders will be executed as soon as they can be executed. Since the units climb onto the transport, they will then delay their attack order until they are dropped out of the transport. So you can drop the transport wherever you wish and the units will immediately walk towards that target and kill it. If you drop it within range of the target, they will not fire at anything else. They will use the entirety of their alpha damage to immediately strike the pre-selected target and for those of you who are wondering that is actually how you manipulate fire beetles I'm sure there's some people who are wondering how on earth you can basically teleport fire beetles to the location of your target what you do is you select the fire beetles load to transport while they're still running across the ground you select your target with an attack and when you drop the transport um, you basically try to preemptively unload the transport where the enemy ACU will be. If he is walking in a line this way, you choose a point far enough away from his ACU that the transport will begin to drop the units and close enough that he will actually run into the transport and select it for the drop. The transport will come in, it will start to unclamp when the ACU is walking underneath, it will unclamp the fire beetles as soon as the clamp is released, the 
attack move will be executed, and boom, dead ACU, nothing the other guy can do about it. Which brings up an interesting point. For those of you who have been killed by this and think it is an OP tactic that cannot be denied, your best bet against this tactic is when you see the transport coming, counterintuitively, you stand still. Because if you stand still, the transport cannot unload close enough to your ACU to actually uh, do the instantaneous damage. You stand still and you immediately begin building wall segments in the direction that you think the fire beetles will be coming from. If you do this, your ACU will already be facing the incoming attack. You will have walls down that will disrupt the movement patterns of the fire beetles and it will give you more time to land multiple overcharges. You will be able to land one when the transport lands, hopefully, and you will be able to get that first overcharge off since your ACU is already facing that way and doesn't have to turn and then hopefully you will survive it thanks to the wall segment. So that, my friends, is the denial method for the fire beetle drop tactic. Now back into this game, because that had absolutely nothing to do with this game, but I felt like sharing the information. Hopefully somebody learned something and that was worth it for the ramble. On the right hand side, we have a GC slowly being pestered to death by some annoying flies. Vulfus, how have you pronounce that? Is that it? Yes, Volthus. Harassing that GC and forcing it back towards the base. And then on this side, we have a horde of Percivals versus a pair of GCs with a GC on assist right here. Now, this is actually going to be a losing proposition, I do believe, for Emberg's forces. Because these Percivals, there are not enough Percivals to kill both GCs. And yes, one GC is going to go down, the other is at about half health. More Percival's coming up for reinforcements. Perhaps this will actually work out. Emberg may have enough units in his base. He's building tack launchers like a madman. And he does have enough point defense. So I think that Galactic Colossus is, is, is actually going to be denied. Yes, he is going to turn back towards the base. Gunship's moving back just in case. And we've got some friendly Percivals moving in to help that GC, which does not need to be standing still because there are multiple spearheads firing on that position, which do a very large amount of cumulative damage. So he does not need to be standing. Got a Monkey Lord building painfully slowly on the front line. And that is pretty much what's going on. Right side is at a standstill. All the action is on the left. Marco Box, uh, well his name is just Box, but that is Marco Box, uh, moving in with his glorious UEF SACUs, a whole lot of letters in that description, going to easily obliterate that GC, move in with the Percivals to deny enemy forces, and we've got three GC and a whole bunch of T3 Rex right here. So they need to snipe off those engineers and claim the mass for themselves as quickly as they possibly can to hopefully tip this game in their favor. We do have a chicken moving down from the north and we've got another GC almost done. This is going to help out the northern team a bit, but it may not be a decisive blow. Actually, I would say it is not going to be a decisive blow. Reclaim happening with these SACUs. The only redeeming factor of the chicken in a situation like this is when you're dealing with T3 hordes and multiple SACUs, you do get the splash damage from the AOE weapon on the Yathatha. And you also get the lightning ball, which you do need to rush in to get the uh, full effect from. So basically the tactic here is to hold all of the other units at the rear so they are not overly damaged by the uh, flailing about of the beheaded chicken once it dies and then that chicken needs to just kamikaze the enemy forces that is the one i the, i i am torn on this the chicken would be a really strong t3 in its own right without the lightning storm but the chicken also that is a whole lot of tack missiles 
I think that was aimed at where the T4s were standing just a moment ago. Yes, it is. And that is going to be a fail at a kill. We got another launch. Perhaps. Nope. Then it is going northward, going to try to kill that monkey lord, and that is going to be successful. Um, totally lost track of what I was about to say, but oh well. Ah, uh, yes. The lightning effect is really cool, and I do like it, but it is a bane on friendly units. You can't really group T4 effectively with Seraphim like you can with the other factions. You pretty much need to send your chickens one at a time, and once they get near death, you want to move all of your assisting units away because of the lightning storm. So it's good and bad for you and I don't know that the good is enough to redeem the bad but that's to individual players to decide personally I like the GC's better there's just a, there's just a more solid unit even though it is a little bit more boring and there's another GC about to come up right here so we're gonna have two relatively full health GC's for the northern side on the southern side we have a GC here a tremendously gargantuan tack launching um, forward base that is being pinged like mad by the southern team but these tacks are still getting through because basically you can't build enough tack defense to deny that many tacks and they are going to pound right through was that really aiming for the ACU did he really hope to bypass that much tack defense and still have enough tack missiles left over to kill an ACU but there is a duke going up that is worrisome Let's go ahead and do a map check-in just to see. So we've got two T4s coming up for the northern team. And we've got a Yathatha over to the right and a large amount of T3. It appears that they are in control of the air. And they do have a large group of strap mowers. Got another T4 here. Nuke defense, which is not loaded. And we have another nuke defense going up on the front. So we have distributed protection and no nuke defense on the left so potentially a nuke could be slipped past these defenses over here and wing this base but i don't think on this trajectory yeah there is no way that they will really be able to damage much once this one is loaded so that is the northern team on the southern side we have a smaller group of strat bombers and mostly, ah, there's a nuke right there, but it has just started loading. And Box is actually floating a ton of mass at the moment. So that will build at full speed. Let's see. Is there nuke defense? I don't see one. But there is not a nuke launcher on the northern side, so that is not an issue. Okay. Another wreck is now available. Actually, I think that is the same wreck. That is the same wreck. It is just being pinged because people need to reclaim it. Definitely something that needs to be going on. I love this hiding place. Yes, Strap Bomber ground attack will still hit an ACU here, but it is relatively protected from just about everything else. Torp Bombers will have a hard time getting to it because you have forward SAMs on the approach and brilliant raiding with the Ilshavas. Would not expect raiding this late in the game, but hey, raiding is always a good option. You want to stay on the offensive. Those Ilshavas are gonna kill off a couple of mass extractors and then retreat to safety. Retreat to safety, retreat to safety. Emphasis is a strange thing. When you put the emphasis on the wrong syllable, it really screws up the English language. Um, so much air production. So many T1 engineers packed in up here. Although, when you have a map like Canis, where space is a bit restricted, having the hordes of Tech 1 engineers makes sense, because you can actually fit a few buildings in, and then pack your engineers in around and in your buildings and then uh, you can get a lot more, you can get a lot higher um, build power density this way than you can with multiple factories, even though you lose the adjacency bonus. So I think that is more important at this point. Now this is about to get interesting. We have Ember on the front with his ACU 
with an absolute... I, I don't... There are so many tack launchers here. Let me see how many there actually are. He has 26 tack launchers. 26. And a bank of 9 Tech 2 stationary artillery. And he is laying down so many Tech 2 point defense. is not even funny. So this is becoming a royal thorn in the side of the northern team. They're having to over-invest in stationary defenses, in shielding, in attack defense, having to move their units around to avoid the fire of this base. This is just what you call a royal pain. And then over here, this is a GC taking multiple strats to the base. And that is nice micro there. Corwin diving in with his strat bombers and retreating to prevent these groups of ASF from killing off the strat bombers. Now, air looks like advantage north at this point, but you still want to keep your strat bombers alive as long as you possibly can. A GC is going to retreat back towards the safety of controlled airspace. And this Yathatha is going to move back into position on guard duty on the right side. We now have three Galactic Colossuses and a chicken. And that Galactic Colossus is no longer being built. Heavy assistance on the nuke defense. And here comes the nuke. We have to see if this can be prevented. We have a wide right strike. Probably was aiming for all of this, but no, it's bypassing this nuke defense, which is also not loaded. He could have hit anywhere he wanted because everyone is mass stalled. And he is going to take out an ACU, killing Double D, eliminating the purple base. That's going to be a lot of the supporting units down here. And an eco wiped off the map. That was a devastating blow. Perfect nuke right there. I, I do not fault him for not launching at the center of the base because you cannot know if these guys were loaded and actually that nuke defense was so close to being loaded. So close. Point blank tack launch. That is beautiful. Almost killing that GC in a single strike. All of these Percivals are going to finish it off, killing off the second. And a third moving in. Emberg overcharging like a madman. Strat Bomber's coming in to clean up. And everything is dead. Strat Bomber's... Oh, oh my. Oh no, 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 no. And Emberg is down. But he did remove all of the T4s before he went. So... I don't know that that's going to be too terrible of a loss for the southern team. They are going to get all of this reclaim. Box is in a brilliant position to reclaim all of this mass and honestly the southern team can build whatever they want with that reclaim because there is so much reclaim there. We've got three SACUs up here building SAMs like mad trying to get protection from these strat bombers. Yes, hopefully they can get that up in time to survive and they are going to start moving over and wrecking things. Now, another reason for killing purple, which I completely agree with, besides not knowing whether or not this one was loaded, purple had the T3 artillery, uh, double D rather. I should not call him purple when I actually know what his name is. And multiple Sam's still going up. That is a... That is a terrible thing. When you have SAMs going up inside your own airspace, that makes it so hard to maintain air control. So hard. Ember commenting, well, that was expensive. Yeah, I can honestly say that was probably the single most expensive ACU death that I have ever seen that did not directly involve a high-level game ender. We'll go calculate in just a second, but right now I want to watch this. Um... This is actually terrifying damage happening to this northern base here. We've got three SAMs down, so pretty much safe from air. Harbingers falling left and right to these three comms. We have a support commander moving in. This is actually Seraphim, and it is a Rambo, so it does have the overcharge function, which will affect these units. 
I think the Seraphim SACU is actually shorter range though than the incoming UEF comm, so if they can kite it and stay away from that overcharge, it will actually be able to kill the Seraphim SACU. But those guys are going to run base eradicated, or the forward fire base, I should say, and those SACUs are going to be pushed back. But Galactic Colossus is, is moving in on the front there. We've got, G, uh, not GCs, Strat Bombers pooling up over here. These GCs are going to stomp all over everything in the front base, and I think this may be the collapse of the Northern team. It is down to a two versus three, but the Northern team expended basically all of their resources to kill Emberg, who admittedly was the most immediately dangerous player due to that firebase. But uh, yeah, Chevy knocked out by uh, Galactic Colossuses, and that is pretty much game. I don't think there is anything else the Northern team can do. That was down to the wire. I I did not know who was going to win that. That was looking like it could swing either way just by the sheer number of T4s that were being built on the Northern side. It was scary. Let's see what we got here. We have an absolute swarm of Tech 3 units. We have three Galactic Colossuses, a chicken, and I don't know how many strat bombers were up here actually. It was probably 15 or so, if not more. And then all of the air that they lost engaging over the ACU, which then went nuclear. Um, I don't even want to venture a guess as to the amount of mass that it took to kill Emberg. That was astounding. Executioner going down to the GCs. And GCs now are basically pillaging the base. And there is a support commander. Where is the last ACU? Perhaps. Ah, right there. Okay. So that is game. Brilliant Canis match. That was truly an epic one. Oh, I thought he was nuking his own base. <laughs> uh, actually, he may have been. Looks like a full turn on that nuke. I'm not sure. All right. Good game to all sides, but especially the southern side, seeing as they won. <coughs> Excuse me. And congrats to Emberg for most expensive death ever, possibly, like I said, outside of, you know, salvation or something. <laughs> Alrighty, that is going to wrap up this cast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you guys in the next one.